guys, my name is Sailor. Welcome to my first video. I will be a freshman at the University of Michigan and in Ann Arbor come fall 2020. And I just wanted to make this video just so I could um, shed some light on how I think I got into University of Michigan. I basically lived off these videos last fall during college app season. I just wanted to give my contribution to the world and share what I now know, having been accepted to University of Michigan. At University of Michigan, I'll be studying in the Literature, Science, and Arts College, which is their biggest college at University of Michigan, and I'm hoping to study maybe economics or poli-sci or something in that realm um, because I hope to go to law school one day. So that's kind of a little bit about me. Let's just get into my stats, extracurriculars, and how I think I got in. <laughs> So I guess we'll start off with just my overall stats and GPA. Um, just a reminder, I don't think GPA is everything. I definitely have seen a variety of GPAs get into University of Michigan, so I don't think it's everything. But uh, I think I graduated with a 3.96 unweighted GPA, um, and then I think it ended up being a 4.2-ish weighted GPA. Uh, with that, I took six AP classes, I believe. And um, one thing I wanted to add was that I know University of Michigan, when they're reading applications, they compare you against your fellow classmates that also applied because they don't want to compare you to another person in another school that may have taken more APs than you or had access to more APs. I know that my school wasn't like one of those really competitive schools that had tons of AP options, but I did take a lot of the options that were presented to me. So I guess now we'll go into AP scores. A little bit of a disclaimer, I don't think these have a ton of weight in college apps because um, you don't really send them in until later or if you do, you only send the ones you took junior year. So not really sure the weight these have, but I'll just share them just in case anyone was curious. Uh, I took six AP tests for each of the AP classes I took. Um, I'm gonna read these off. For AP English Language, I got a four. For AP Human Geography, I got a five. AP Spanish, I got a four. AP Spanish Literature, I got a four. AP Calculus, I got a three. And AP Government, I got a three. So definitely like a wide range of scores. And a lot of these I actually will be able to use. I think every single one besides my Calculus for Michigan. I think Michigan only accepts a five to get credit in Calculus. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the case. So those are my AP scores. Take them as you will, but those for them. Also, one other thing, side note, I never took any SAT subject tests. I know Michigan doesn't require them, and a lot of state schools don't require them. So if you are spending a lot of time studying for SAT or ACT, I recommend just not taking the subject tests unless your individual college requests them, because I spent the majority of my time studying for the ACT, and I think that really helped my score. If I had two, three, four more scores to study for, I don't know if I would have done as well in the ACT, so that's just my advice, but... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we'll move into my standardized testing scores. Another thing that I don't know, I don't know if it has a ton of weight with Michigan because I've seen people get denied with extremely high test scores and in with lower test scores and everything in between. So I'm not really sure how much weight this carries, but um, I only took the ACT. I didn't take the SAT. Um, and my ACT score, my final score I ended up sending was a 31. So that would, that's definitely in the range for Michigan, but it's not one of those stellar scores. So it's definitely possible if you don't have that like killer score like 33, 34, 35, you can still do it. So one recommendation I have for studying for the ACT is get the ACT Black Book off Amazon. That's where I got it. All of the tutoring I did before was was helpful, but I think that Black Book like was the reason I jumped like seven points in my science score and it brought my score so much higher than it was. Um, I took the ACT three times and I think super scored was the 31. Actually. My last testing was all the highest scores I gotten on each section, so 31 was my final score, and yeah. Okay, so I guess now I'll move into my activities that I put on the Common App, and also just like my extracurriculars. Um, let me just say, this probably carried my application, um, my extracurriculars plus my essays. I think this is really where I showed my dedication and how, like, my interests, and I think Besides the GPA, the ACT, those things get you in the door, but really I think your extracurriculars and your essays like invite you into the door. Wait, what's the phrase? I think that your extracurriculars and your essays and all your activities you did over your four years are really what help the admissions counselors make a decision on you and really understand you as a person and not just numbers. So I'm going to be reading in just a bit of um, exactly the order I put on the Common App, all my activities. I'm just going to name the main ones. 
So the first extracurricular I put on the Common App was DECA. If you don't know what DECA is, it's basically a club that uh, is pretty international and it competes in uh, business, management, marketing, finance, all of the above. And basically you go to competitions, you have a chapter in your school, and you basically learn about business through that. And you can travel and you can compete in role plays and projects. And it was really like one of the best communities I found at my school. And I was really happy to be a part of it. So I was in that club for three years. And by my third year, senior year, I ended up actually being the, one of the vice presidents of the club. And our club had about, or chapter had about 300 members. So I really like honed in that that was a big commitment, a big leadership opportunity for me. And I learned a lot from it. Through competition, some of the main awards I put for DECA were that um, junior year, I won um, the state competition in my category. So I actually got first place, which was one of my biggest accomplishments. And then that allowed me to fly to Orlando, Florida to complete, compete in the international conference for DECA, which then I got ninth in my category. So I got top 10 internationally and that was another thing I put and made sure to hone in that I really improved over my three years and I was able to actually place really highly in my category. So the second um, extracurricular I put on my Common App was a volunteer work I did for about, I think it was about mid junior year to beginning of senior year. And I actually volunteered for an organization in my area called Northwest Parkinson's Foundation, with which I had a pretty personal connection to. And I actually ended up starting a blog for that non-for-profit. And um, on the website, I actually would interview uh, fellow members of the Parkinson's community, a lot of younger folks that were diagnosed with Parkinson's, as well as family members of those folks. And I would just talk about their experiences and how they're dealing with it or finding their own community within the non-for-profit. So after about volunteering for them for about eight months or something like that. Um, I ended up getting awarded Volunteer of the Year, which was a big honor for me, and I definitely put that on my honors category of the Common App. So the third extracurricular I put on my Common App was my job that I was actually working in for from uh, sophomore year to junior year for about a year or so. Um, and it was with a startup company. It was a Korean skincare and makeup brand and they actually started as a pop-up and I was a retail sales associate and then we actually grew a lot and moved to a permanent residency in the same mall and uh, I basically kind of emphasized my experience working with a startup company from the very beginning and how much I learned from that and the fourth uh, activity I was involved in I actually just started in, in my senior year I was in ASB um, for my school and I was on the senior class council so I basically ran all senior affiliated events and I was actually supposed to plan prom, graduation, and all of our senior traditions at the end of the year, rip that, but that was my supposed to be duty with my team, uh, but we also did a lot of stuff in the beginning of the year with fundraisers, raising money for the prom that didn't exist, and all that stuff, so that's what I put on there, and then I also put um, a summer camp I was involved in, that was a business and entrepreneur summer camp, entrepreneurship summer camp at um, Yale University, which was an amazing experience, I met so many amazing people and I learned a ton about business and entrepreneurship and the last like few of them were uh, all volleyball related so I was a, I played volleyball for a good portion of my high school career um, and I was also a volunteer coach in my sophomore year so I put that on there but yeah the last couple things were like volleyball related so that's pretty much a wrap up on my extracurriculars and the majority of stuff I put on the activities list. Also in the writing department are the supplements. I think Michigan, I'm not sure if it's different this year. Don't mind the birds in the background. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's different this year, but I know that last year we had three supplement essays for the Michigan application by itself. And um, I'm just gonna go through each and like generally what I've talked about in each of the supplements or in my tips for them. So the first supplement I had, if it's the same this year, that'd be awesome, but it was if you could only do one of the activities you've listed, why would you, which one would you continue and why would you continue it? And I just talked about my experience with DECA and the community that I, that I got out of it and all that I learned from it. And it was a really short essay, not too complicated. Oh, and one thing I wrote was always hook up, hook your essays or your supplements back into how you would apply what you learned at the college you're applying to. So in this case, it was Michigan for me. Um, I like about DECA and all of my, all I've learned and the passion I've grown from it and how I would apply what I've learned at University of Michigan into spe specific organizations that I was interested in and specific things I'd want to join when I got on campus. And the second one was describe a community of yours and your place within it. I actually talked about my work in this essay. I talked about how much I learned from the people I worked with how I learned so much about a Korean culture that I never learned before, and how much I learned from actually starting over at a company and having to learn a whole new product line and a whole new culture I'd never been exposed to. And I talked a lot about that, and I thought it was a really good take on the, on the question. 
Hey guys, <laughs> this is me on my computer editing right now. I not get the last footage of this video onto my computer to save my life. I don't know why, but I just thought I would just film it right here. Um, I wanted to sum up this video by just saying, if you don't have perfect grades, perfect test scores, or something feels like you can't measure up to all the other people applying to these great schools, please don't be discouraged. I didn't have the amazing test score. I didn't have out of this world grades. Um, I really think that your extracurriculars, you as a person, is so much more important to these colleges because once you meet those basic requirements for test scores and grades, really you, then you need to differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself because so many people are applying with those, with those same stats. So really focus on honing in on your extracurriculars. Build your resume with a ton of purpose and go seek out opportunities. If you're at your school and there's not a ton of extracurriculars or there's a certain opportunity that's not offered at your school, don't be afraid to go out of your school and find stuff outside of your school, like a job, a volunteer, volunteer work, or anything like that. If you want a certain experience, do not be afraid to go get it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was really uh, informational and really helped you in your college application process. Please comment down below any questions you have. I'll make sure to try to answer all of them as best as I can. And looking forward, please subscribe and like. I am actually planning on starting a YouTube channel and posting college vlogs and what it's like to go to University of Michigan during coronavirus and college move-ins and all that stuff. So please stay tuned for that and thank you guys so much. Bye!